I'm here with Cedric Souza, um, a regular on um, various FIH uh, channels now. Hi, Cedric. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Sarah. I hope you're doing well too. So we've got all these continental qualifiers taking place in the next few weeks, and of course, um, the Women's Asia Cup is taking place from the 21st to the 28th of January in Muscat in Oman. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? At first, you know, your first impressions, your first thoughts on that on that competition. Well, I think it's such an important competition because the top four teams in that team in that a tournament get a direct qualification for the World Cup. So for all the teams, it's a it's a bite on the cherry, you know, to get that get that qualification. It's so so important for them. Um, Oman being is a place where you know people love the hockey there. So uh, I don't know about the spectators being allowed or not, but I think if there will be, we'll find a lot of people coming to watch that game, those games. Yeah, I mean it's so important. Um, the host nation embraces the sport. And as you say, Oman is a, is, a, is a country that really does embrace this. Obviously, people will be able to watch on watch hockey. We don't yet know the spectator situation. But one thing I do know is this is going to be a very, very competitive uh, competition, isn't it? Because I think we could probably say there are four teams that are going to be favourites for the top four spots. But as we know from the Olympics and every other hockey tournament and every other sporting event, upsets can happen. Um, and uh, so, so just tell me a little bit. I, I mean, obviously, you're going to have a lot of knowledge on the India team. Tell me a little bit about the India team and how they're shaping up. Well, they've got a new coach in Yannicka Shopman, and she's taken over from Shod Morena. And, and, you know, I don't know her personally, but I know of her, and she's got fantastic credentials. This is her first tournament, so she really wants to start on a winning note. The team is brimming with confidence, okay? Yeah. Uh, she, after, after their fourth uh, place position in the, in the Olympics, They've, born in, they've been in a bubble because of the COVID restrictions and they've been training, so they are really strong. Yeah. And what she's done is she's trying to make a kind of a, a pattern within the squad itself, a sort of style of play that she wants for them. And that is uh, using the attacking flair of India and making sure the defense is also very strong. So that means a lot of running on and off the ball, basically, you know. And, uh, and she wants also to have a link up play between in attack, so there's more numbers. And of course, the most important thing is some pressure on the ball. Yeah. And last but not least, the strength of an Indian player is basically the 1v1s. And if she just wants to make that duels, that they win those duels, because if India gets it on the break, she's very dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And Yannicka, I mean, I, I, I watched her when she, uh, when she coached the USA. She's just someone who will push the team very, very hard physically. And, and that's something that I think the India team will really respond to well. Because as you say, they, they're getting the confidence from winning and they realise that the, the, the fitter and the more physical they are, the more success they're going to have. Um, it's, it's, it's a nicely balanced team, isn't it? There's some new players coming in um, and there's obviously some mature players there, um, which is not the same to be, that could be said about China. Um, looking at the China team, I think we've got nine debutants in that team. So in your opinion, is China starting a whole new journey now, do you think? Well, maybe, you know, because there's not much information about that part of the world, but basically I think Every team goes through a process of losing players and getting new ones coming in. Uh, uh, there will be a chunk of players going out of China because they've had a, a team for many years, a very, very experienced team. And if you've got nine players coming in now, it means they're looking at the future. Mm -hmm. I think every team has to look that way. That's the evolving of teams and getting into, the, into a squad. But from an, uh, from an aspect, but you can never let this, never actually say the teams are weak because they've got new players in. You don't know what's going to happen because it's just a question of performance on a given day. And who are those girls who have come in now, the nine girls who have come in now? Will they be able to take the rigors of this tournament? Or will they just shine? Are they ready for it? Only, only time will tell. Yeah. And I, again, as, as we saw in, in Tokyo, you know, the, the young South African men's team, they created surprise after surprise. And we could well see that from China as well, particularly as nobody knows what's been going on for the last few few months there. You know, they've, they've been obviously doing a lot of training. Um, what about Japan? I think you, uh, you know, you've spoken to the Japanese coach. Well, the Japanese coach is actually one of my, uh, a player whom I coached, one of my wards. Uh, and he, he went off to New Zealand and, uh, and we kept in touch, and he was the, the national coach of the New Zealand team in, in, in Tokyo Olympics also. So he's in touch with me, and we, and we always, you know, the old man asks, you know, gives help if he needs help, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I'm really proud of the fact that he's become a national coach for, for Japan. You know, it's really nice. And for me, an award does that, I feel great as, yeah. as a kind of old daddy, as I keep saying to myself. But what he's done is actually he hasn't been with the team for too long because of the COVID restrictions. So what he did was he actually was doing 
Uh, he did all the testings. He was in Korea and did a lot of testing with the team, and got them to do that because they were in COVID restriction and they couldn't train, they couldn't do it. They could train, but they couldn't go out of the city. Mm -hmm. So um, he did that. And then he's having a camp now in Oman for 10 days prior to the tournament. Mm -hmm. And his goals are actually, as everybody else is, to get in the top four. But he is going to be doing about a high press and channeling more and more and then a counter-attacking play. That's what his strength is. And he always says the key to his team is the effectiveness of that squad. They may not create a lot of chances, but when they get those chances, they'll make it count. Yeah. And they may not have a big drag flicker in their things, but again, it's a question of percentages. The, the flicker, her name is actually Shihori Oikawa. She just yep. flicks in the yep. box. So you get basically rebounds, you know? Yeah. And their biggest player is their captain, Yuri Nagal, who is a great striker. The ability in the circle, the effectiveness in the circle is incredible. Okay, and the awareness and the leadership skills. So yeah, in that fact, they've got a couple of players, but I still say India's got too many guns. She's got too many players and very, very strong. Yeah, I mean, I am one of the people who thoroughly enjoyed watching Japan in the Tokyo Olympics. I thought they played a lovely style of hockey. I felt they were unlucky not to get further in the tournament. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what, what they do um, over the course of this tournament. The, I guess the other one in the big four is obviously Korea. Um, and again, we don't know an awful lot about Korea, but they're a team with a great history at this event. I think they've won more titles than any other team. They've had a little bit of a low for the last few years. So I, I'm guessing they're going to be bouncing back as well, because like you say, this is such a great opportunity for a team to start a journey towards the World Cup, isn't it? Yes, definitely. You know, you, you look at it, uh, the Koreans have won this tournament thrice. They're the highest, uh, they've won the most amount of times in India's, India's center twice. Yeah. So although India is the current holders, you know, uh, Korea has got the pedigree of winning it more than India at this stage. But I think they've got a great individual, they've got great individual skills. They've got a running capacity, which is incredible. Yeah. They're an experienced team and they're dangerous on the break. That's their biggest strength of the Korean team. And they have... Uh, I think Chion Yon Bai, who is a really good player, you know, uh, who was probably the best player in the Asian Champions Trophy, which happened recently. And then they got their captain, Kim Young Yang. This is a, these are, again, there's just a couple of players who can make that difference in that squad. And, you know, uh, only time will tell in this tournament what's going to happen now. Yeah. I mean, I think probably um, someone who knows the game is probably going to predict top four we've just mentioned india china korea japan in some one of those orders but you know malaysia are a team not to be taken lightly i've watched them in the past uh, they 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 work hard they learn incredibly quickly which i think is one of the keys in this tournament so malaysia thailand indonesia and singapore they're all teams that can't be discounted because four places it only takes one team to slip up for somebody unexpected to uh, to come into the fold doesn't it Definitely, you know, just look at it this way, you know, it's a qualifier. Mm. And in the qualifier, people, the smaller nations come with a complete focus of only one job, to qualify. Yeah. It reminds me of a story when we played against Wales, India, I was Indian coach at that stage, we played against Wales, and everybody said Wales is, is a walkover, and we were one down till almost the end. They just had us at the back, on our backs, we were running ourselves, right? We got through, but the question was, they come focused for... A qualifier and anything can happen you know in this in this kind of a qualification tournament because everybody wants to play the world cup i think that's a fantastic place to round up this interview anything can happen because it's a qualifier wise words once again from uh, from cedric so thank you so much um it's it's, it's going to be a really exciting tournament it means an awful lot for the area uh, you know for the region for, for, for international hockey to be back um as, as a coach how excited would you be about this tournament you know coming in and taking place well, if, if, I was, if I was lucky, I would be there on the pitch myself. It's just, you know, because of COVID and, and, and not having many matches all over the world, when you get the opportunity to play on the turf, you just want to be there all the time. You don't want to get off the turf. So, so I think it's very important from, from a team's perspective and the growth and progress of a team to have matches and to have competitive matches and nothing like a qualifier. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Cedric. As always, brilliant speaking to you. Thank you, Sarah.